Are you wanting to make invitations with gold foiled names? Well, I'm going to show you how to prepare those names with the foil quill and also the foiling process. So let's get started. Here I am in Adobe Illustrator. I've created my artwork and now I'm going to change the names from text to single line paths for the foil quilt to foil. I'm going to start with the first name which is Elizabeth. I select the pencil tool that is in the toolbar, add a one point stroke and change the colour to red so that you'll be able to see the difference when I'm drawing. Now you just need to go through and trace the letters. I must admit I did cheat a little bit by using the iPad Pro, the iPad Pencil and the Astro Pad. But before I had the iPad Pro, I would just use the mouse and it would work just as well. I just needed to edit it a little bit at the end to make sure the letters were smooth, but all in all it was pretty easy. Once I finished tracing the name, I then delete the original text. I then select the name and go up to the stroke colour and change it back to black. I zoom in and make sure that all the letters are joining where I think they look best. If you don't use an iPad Pro, this is the point where you would play around with the characters a little more to smooth and position them better. Just like I said before, it's pretty easy. Just select the path, double click on a point and drag to the new position. You can also use the smooth tool to smooth out the jagged lines. Once you are happy, you will need to join all the letters to make sure that they are connected. You do this by selecting all the letters and going up to Object, Compound Path and then select Make. Now just move into position. From here, go through and do the same thing for the other name. Move the name across into position and finally do the same for the plus. So that is the single pass complete and from here we just need to save. I'm saving this as a new illustrator file just in case we need to go back and edit the original. Now remove the names and save as a high resolution PDF file for printing. Make sure your trim marks and bleed settings are also ticked. Here is our PDF without the names. Just go ahead and print out as many copies as you need and make sure you cut them out as well. Back in Illustrator, I've opened the invitation again and this time I'm removing the artwork and also the body text. I select the rectangle tool and make a rectangle the same size as the invitation without the bleed. So it's basically the final size once it will be cut. This will help me position it correctly in the Cricut Design space and I'll show you that a bit later. Make sure you remove the fill and then go ahead and save as an SVG file. So here I am in Cricut Design space. I've uploaded my SVG file and I'm now going to change the rectangle box to another colour just for my reference. I will then hide this layer so I can see the text. I changed all the text from cut to draw so that the foil quill is recognised and the cutter won't try and cut out the foil. Next, I'm going to go and do something that is completely optional, but I really recommend it. For some reason, Cricut leaves a quarter inch border when cutting your design out and this makes it incredibly difficult to line up your pre-cut card. So to fix this, I'm going to make a square shape and size it down. It doesn't matter how big or small the box is, but I prefer really small. Up here in the position field, I will type in 0.25, which is a quarter inch as a decimal. 
Now my square is positioned correctly as a guide. So from here, I show my rectangle invitation layer and also select the other layers apart from the square layer we just made. I position the invitation on the mat at one inch and one inch. I then delete the invitation layer as I no longer need that anymore. Now I can select all the layers and click attach and then make it. On the mat, I place my pre-cut card at the one inch by one inch mark as I did on the screen. Because I have pre-cut card, there is no additional space for the tape to secure to the foil. To fix this, I add some scrap pieces to the sides of my design. I can now secure the foil with washi tape. At my Cricut, the first thing I do is remove the cutter as I only want to use the foil quill. Here I take the medium foil quill and screw it into my adapter for the Cricut. I pop it into the machine next to the blade adapter and add the heat shield underneath. After heating for 5 minutes, I remove the heat shield and now I can start foiling. So that is it. Now you can add gold foil to your invitations and the quality is fantastic. If you're looking for more videos based on the foil quill, be sure to see the playlist. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.